In Nepal, two Christians with young families traveled many miles. They went from village to village, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. As a leader in Operation Mobilization, Lawrence Tong helped send them out. And the two brothers went, and they never came back. They lost, and we found their bodies uh, 10 days later. Uh, it was devastating for all of us. But that's the price people pay f- for the gospel, for their faith. Jesus never promised his followers an easy path. In fact, he told his disciples that the world would hate them. He sent them out as sheep among wolves. Jesus' words came true in the life of the apostles, and they're still coming true today in the lives of his followers around the world. Join host Todd Nettleton as we hear their inspiring stories and learn how we can help right now on the Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network. Welcome again to the Voice of the Martyrs Radio. My name is Todd Nettleton. We are in our studio today in Bartlesville, Oklahoma with Lawrence Tong. Lawrence is the International Director of Operation Mobilization. We have had other guests from OM in our studio over the years. Lawrence, it is great to have you here. Welcome to Voice of the Martyrs Radio. Thank you. It is good to be here. One of the things that I noticed in in reading about your years of service at OM uh, is that you led their work in China. Uh, China, obviously, restricted nation, close to the gospel, communist government. How did you get in, <laughs> if you can talk about that? And, and what was that like to be on the ground in a very closed, very communist country? Yeah, um, I lived a total of six years in China, and I love every moment and every experience. The believers there, again, were people that I felt very small in their presence. They had so little, and they gave so much. Now, I'm a holder of Singapore passport, so we can go into China without a visa. Ah. And so I, I would go in for a few months at a time and go out and extend. Apparently, because of my you know, Chinese background and all this, I seem to fit in very well. No security <laughs> officer ever asked or questioned really? me. Yeah, and I, wow. I work on the principle that I do not criticize them for their policies. I'm a guest. Um, I don't make fun of them or their culture. And as long as I contribute good, I think they will tolerate my presence in their country. As you look at China now, have, has it changed in, in the time, even since a few years ago when you were there? And what are those changes? What do they mean for Christians in China, but also for groups like OM that, that want to serve Christians in China. Yeah, the recent policies, well, recent has been you know, um, eight, nine years ago, the policy has been harsh towards missionaries or, uh, or foreign religious workers. When I came into China, we were able to meet and we, we even give thanks in public for food and all that and, and without concern for our security there, there were restrictions. If you break the the law, you know you face the music. I work with the underground churches. They were careful, but they met uh, within the boundary. I understand now that this is no longer the case. the The present government wants to wants to know who's meeting. They wants to have the names of everyone they met, and if you are not part of the official churches, then you are not um, tolerated. I also understand that many missionaries, you know, missionaries from OM have um, lost their status and their visas um, in China, and many had left. I think um, thousands of missionaries had left China in the last probably eight, nine years, and, and I felt sad. We're talking today on Voice of the Martyrs Radio with Lawrence Tong. He is the International Director for Operation Mobilization. They are one of our strategic partners here at Voice of the Martyrs. So, Lawrence, in light of those changes, how does a group like OM minister in China or minister to Chinese Christians when a lot of your workers have had their visas revoked? They're not in the country anymore. How do you you keep on in the ministry? Yeah, the locals— uh, one of the things we've done uh, in the earlier time is we started recruiting locals and send them to our ships for training. Uh, it's difficult for Chinese to get visas in a foreign country, but staying on board a ship, uh, you, no don't need a, yeah, you don't need a visa. <laughs> and so that way we had trained quite a few people. I think 
in the last 15 years, we must have at least 250 of the Chinese young people that have spent at least uh, one to two years, if not more, on board one of our ships. These are the people that now carry on our ministry and our work. Um, we have a welfare center that I, together with the local believers, we have set up after the earthquake. We handed it to the local believers, and it's totally run and sustained by the local believers. They operate under strict restrictions, but because they are doing a lot of good to the society, the, and because they're local without any foreign influence, mm -hmm. the government allowed them to continue. I see that at least for now and in the, in the f near future, we need to accelerate and empower the local church to do the work in China. Foreigners, we, we, we are like a product on a shelf. There, there is a lifespan. <laughs> but the locals, hey, they can stay as long. There is one Chinese brother told me, he says, I'm a local. They cannot kick me out of the country. <laughs> yeah. They can put me in jail, but they can't kick me out That's of the right. country. Lawrence, you talk about OM, and, and the focus of the ministry is vibrant communities of Jesus followers among the least reached. Yes. When we talk about the least reached, we're talking about difficult places. Uh, I think of Afghanistan. I mm. think of, you know, Northwest Africa, uh, heavily Muslim countries in the Middle East. How do you prepare workers, whether they're locals from within that country or someone you're sending into the country, how do you get them ready to go to a place where, like in China, you could end up in jail, you could end up being beaten up, maybe you could even end up being killed? How do you get people ready to think about that sacrifice and still go forward with the work that God's called them to? Yeah. You know, OM is known for the on-the-job training and so we, we have different ways of training, but most one common way is that our people had served in other fields prior to going to places like Afghanistan. And then when they are there, you know, they, they work under the leadership of the more senior person, someone who's been there for, for a long time, and they learn to operate under the supervision of these leaders. This, this is one of our common way of, of our training our people. We are always involved with the locals. We are there because of them. And so um, we, we provide jobs. We, we create some kind of a, uh, a job so that we can have the locals in and then we interact with them, work with them. A lot of our work in Afghanistan, um, to have a presence there, we were involved in uh, relief uh, work, community development work, and that has helped us gain uh, trust and respect and acceptance from the communities that we we lived in. If uh, allow me to just share a little bit about Afghanistan, yeah, please. Uh, we 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 have. Because I think people are, especially with the Taliban takeover, yeah. there are people very curious about what is happening with Christian yeah. work. Uh, it's not just the Taliban alone, but also the terrorists, the gangsters that are operating there. You know, Afghanistan, for many years, have no proper functioning government. And, and we pay the price. We have lost lives. Our people were taken um, away. We, we evacuated our people, and then they went back again. But the, the, the wonderful thing is um, when we evacuated our last people out of the country and the Taliban came into, into control, uh, our team ascertained that it was safe to go back. So they did. They made contact with all the people that they worked with in the past and let that connections and network led them to, to an encounter with the Taliban officials who, who heard many good things that we had done in the past. And so they invited our people back wow. to work among the people. So, so we have people now. You have an open well, door yeah. to go to Afghanistan. That's mm -hmm. amazing. It is. Does the Taliban know that these people are Christians? Like, like do they know— this is a Christian organization, or do they just see, hey, you know, they're they're educating the children, or they're helping people, they're providing medical care. Is that all they see, or do they know this is a Christian group? Well, if they know, they didn't tell us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they know that we are foreigners. We are not a Christian group. We are not there to uh, propagate and uh, or proselytize, proselytize yeah. the people. Uh, we were there to help them. 
in their time of needs. I think that's what they saw. But I think the Taliban's they are not stupid people. They 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 are educated. You know they are English speakers, and so I think they knew who our background. But as long as we are not a threat to them, they willing to work with us. Wow. We're talking this week on Voice of the Martyrs Radio with Lawrence Tong. He is the International Director of Operation Mobilization. Lawrence, as a leader, I mean, you mentioned specifically with Afghanistan, you had evacuated people mm. and then they wanted to go back and you know the Taliban's in charge, you know it's dangerous. How do you think as a leader about sending people out to places where they could be killed? Yeah, this is a burden I have to carry, and uh, and we have lost lives under my watch. People, you know, even in peaceful Nepal, our two brothers, young, young brothers, one married less than two years, the other one has a child um, six years old, and they both went what we call trekking, and they took the literature to some of the remote places uh, in Nepal. They arrived at one village. And they says this village says, oh, we have received the gospel here, but there's another village further up, and um, you may want to go to them and, and give them some literature. And the two brothers went, and they never came back. They lost, and we found their bodies uh, ten days later. Wow. Uh, it was devastating for all of us. But that's the price uh, people pay f- for the gospel, for their faith. And as a leader, I pray for them. We do all we can to ensure their safety and their protection, and the rest we hand it over to God. And God keeps calling people to go to dangerous yeah. places, so yeah. He hasn't He hasn't let up in that in that effort in that call. I'm also interested, Lawrence. As uh, again, this is kind of a leadership question. The the previous leaders of OM have been Westerners. Uh, we actually have had uh, the founder George Verwer. We've had Dale Rotan on Voice of the Martyrs oh, wow. Radio. You come at it with a different perspective, obviously from Singapore, an Eastern perspective. Yeah. Do you think that gives you an extra benefit? Uh, are there ex- are there ways you see things differently than maybe have been seen in the past because of your background, because of your upbringing? I inherited a very good legacy. OM is an amazing organization to serve with. And when they ask me to lead, um, they know it's going to be different. <laughs> I told them, it says, I'm not George, I'm not Peter or Dale, and I will serve out of who I am. And they said, this is exactly what we want. And um, so they gave me the freedom to be who I am. Now, of course, OM is a Western organization, and uh, and I'm an Eastern or Global South person operating in a Western context. Um, And that has its challenges, uh, misunderstandings, because, you know, the Asians have their own idiosyncrasies that the West (laughs) may not fully (laughs) appreciate. So there were some tensions there, but I think on the whole, it's been a good learning uh, journey for me. I didn't find it very difficult, and I think because the leaders in OM, yeah, they knew they ultimately served the Lord, and one of the ways to glorify the Lord is to submit to one another. They submit to me, and I submit to them as well. And then together we we learn and find our way forward. We're talking this week on Voice the Martyrs Radio with Lawrence Tong. He's the international director of Operation Mobilization. Uh, Lawrence, if if I'm a uh, 18, 19, 20 year old person, I come to you and say, I, I feel like God is calling me to missions. I feel like God is calling me to serve. What are the qualities that you want to see in my life that would kind of lead you to believe, yes? I think this person is going to be a great asset in the missions community. Yeah, actually, our our, our entry requirement is very low. <laughs> and first, you have to be a born again a believer, a, a, a lover of Jesus, a minimum eighteen years old because of insurance, and then you must have a willing heart. Uh, we look at a spiritual quality. Skills can be taught. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can learn it on in any OM fields very quickly. But character takes a lifetime to develop. And we are looking for people, men and women, with willing hearts, willing to learn, willing to, to, to repent, willing to try 
and make mistakes and learn from the mistakes. And and if you have a you have those requirement, there you go. You f- you fulfill ninety percent of the requirement. <laughs> the rest are just formalities. <laughs> so let me let me ask a question because some of our listeners maybe are wrestling with the idea of I I think God might be calling me. Mm-hmm. I'm not a hundred percent sure. What would you say to them about? thinking through that call and making that commitment. Okay, I'm going to go. Yeah. You know, actually, OM, our two-year program, is positioned in such a way for people to come and exactly test it out, whether this is God's plan for them or not. And it's okay if God has other plans. Uh, Not everybody is called to full-time work, but at least you can give two years of Mm -hmm. your life. So for people who are not sure where to go, where to serve, then the ship is the best option. You come for two years in a safe environment. You're being trained. If you make a mistake, we all make mistakes. And uh, and uh, and then you move from ports to ports, country to country. You, you get a good exposure. Many of the people that came on board the ship were, were gap year students, but they left the ship with a very focused intention of what they want to do with life. Um, some went back to universities and and complete their formal educations. Others took on a different career, but many ended up in Bible schools and seminaries. Yeah, in, in Europe, I remember years ago when I was a ship director for, of Logos II, uh, one of the Bible colleges said to me that OM is the largest suppliers of students in their Bible school. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I understand you signed up for two years too, so you got to be careful signing up for that two years. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we tell the people come for two years, but you know they told me I'm still in the middle of my two years. <laughs> Forty-some years later. Yep. I would I would echo what you say of, of getting that experience. And like you say, not everyone is going to, stay and serve the rest of their lives, but their lives are going to be impacted by those two years. And they're going to go home, even if they're back in their home country, they're going to be prayer warriors, they're going to be givers, they're going to be pillars in their local church who are talking about missions and talking about what God is doing. So I would just echo what Lawrence has said. Go ahead and get that taste, and and maybe God will call you, and maybe he'll call you back home to still be a representative for gospel work Lawrence, what's the hardest part of your job? The hardest part, I think, has to do with me. Uh, I think I'm my biggest enemy. There, there's a word they call imposter syndrome, mm-hmm. and I struggle with that. The grace of God has put me where I am, and out of my imperfection, God is using me to lead uh, an organization like OM. And yet I felt that I don't deserve it. You know, this is, this is a mistake. I'm going to wake up one morning and find out that I'm an imposter uh, trying to be somebody that I'm not. And, and this is my biggest struggle. And it's a daily, daily dying to self, acceptance of uh, my own situation. Yeah. In some ways, that's a, a blessing because it forces you to rely on God. Um, but yeah, I, and I appreciate your willingness to be transparent about that. As we look ahead to the next 12 months, the next 18 months, and you think about OM's work, what is what are the things that you're most excited about? Yeah, our new vision. That gets me excited. I, I, I wake up every mor- morning thinking how a, a group of, you know, a group of 5,000 people together with their partners and their collaborative organizations focus on one mission, and that is to see vibrant communities of Jesus followers among the least rich. I, I see the potential. I, I see that someday thousands and thousands of people will be gathering in groups studying the work of God, locals teaching locals, locals sending out locals to do the same. Uh, that, that gets me excited and all that I'm doing right now uh, in OM is preparing the organization and its people towards the end goal. Uh, our training, our resources, our attention, our materials are all directed in that direction. Amen. That gets me excited too. <laughs> yeah. and, and the gospel work is not for one organization. Right. Um, I mean, we have no monopoly over the gospel, the Great Commission. 
it is for the global body of Christ. And so we want to do our small part in empowering the body to do likewise. Lawrence, as we finish up, we always like to equip listeners to pray. We talked about Afghanistan, and how do, how do we pray right now for the country of Afghanistan, for Christians who are there? How do we pray for them? You know, I think Afghanistan in many ways a misunderstood nation. Um, they, they have gone through a lot over the years, and all we hear were the warring side of the nation. But there are beautiful people, beautiful people there. And I've known many Afghan believers who are, wow, if, if they don't tell me their nationality, I would think they, they, they're from my church. Let's pray for them that they will stay strong in their faith and, um, and will not give up. I mean, they haven't given up, but will not give up uh, under difficult situations. Pray that God will move the government and be merciful to, uh, to the nation. My, my concern for Afghanistan is, is the scarcity of food. I, I'm afraid that people are going to die simply because they cannot find food. Especially as the winter comes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what can we do? I mean, and there's limited of what we can do, but God can do many things. And let's cry out to God. Uh, for the people of Afghanistan, pray for the government. We may not agree with everything they do. Uh, we don't know. But the, but the Bible instructed us to pray for those in authority. And let's pray for them that God's hand will be upon these people and that, that, that those in authority will govern for the interests of the people and not self-gain. Uh, and then, of course, um, Allow me to slot in a prayer request for OMS uh, who are serving there yeah, for protections, even though they were invited by the government. We, we do not take that for granted yeah. and, and pray for their safety and their well-being. And, and every single day that I don't receive news, bad news, I, I give thanks to God. Well, also bad news. I mean, I do give thanks <laughs> as well, but... Yeah. Lawrence, how let's let's go out to the broader OM family. How do we pray for OM and for the organization that you lead? Yeah, um, as we implement this new vision, yes, a lot of the fields have aligned to the new vision, but there are still other fields that it will take time. So let's pr- um, continue to pray that you know, as we implement in these directions, we will march in sync with God's uh, leading. We don't want to go ahead of God. And we don't want to be fall too far behind either. <laughs> and I believe that God is leading us in the right direction. And so let's pray that God will open the doors for us in, t- in the future with lots and lots and lots of opportunities uh, for us to plant teams in, in places where Jesus is not known today. That's, you know, in the near future, we can s- hear hymns and worship songs to God being sung by this group of people who today have not known Christ. Pray that we stay true to the calling that God has given to us. Amen. The the vision for Operation Mobilization, vibrant communities of Jesus followers among the least reached. That is places like Afghanistan. That is places like China. That is other places around the world. Uh, I love that focus. Obviously, that connects deeply with us at Voice of the Martyrs because those are also the places where you will face persecution, where you will face difficulty and hardship. Lawrence, it's such a blessing to meet you, such a blessing to have you on Voice of the Martyrs Radio. Thank you for being our guest this week. Thank you for having me. You've been listening to the Voice of the Martyrs Radio. Our guest has been Lawrence Tong. He's the International Director of Operation Mobilization. If you'd like to know more about OM, we mentioned this earlier, we have had George Verwer and Dale Rotan, two of the founders of Operation Mobilization. We have also had Andrew Scott, the leader of OM here in the United States. You can find those conversations as well as listen to this conversation again at vomradio.net or you can find Voice of the Martyrs Radio wherever you listen to podcasts. I would encourage you also to share. Share this conversation with maybe a young person you know that God might be talking to about going overseas, about serving him full time. Share this conversation with your pastor. Share it with Christian friends who will join in praying for places like Afghanistan. Again, that website, vomradio.net, will also give you a link there to the OM website. And I hope you'll be back with us next week right here 
on the Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network.